Hey everyone, Joe here. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to get started with EQ or equalization. I know it can be tricky to get your head around and know where to start when using it in a mix, whether you're mixing vocals or drums or anything else. I'm gonna demystify EQ for you and explain how to use it in a mix. So firstly, I'm gonna go over exactly what EQ is. Then I'm gonna go through all the, the different parameters of an EQ plugin, what they do and why you'd use them. Uh, and then we're gonna use it in a mix. I'm gonna show you where to start with it, uh, how to achieve the sound that you're after. So firstly, what is EQ? To put it very simply, EQ is like a very clever volume knob. It lets you boost or accentuate certain frequencies on the frequency spectrum, and it lets you reduce or attenuate certain frequencies. And an equalizer is the tool that will let you put that into action. For example, we've got an EQ plugin here. You can get hardware EQs that you might find in some bigger studios. If you're still not 100% sure, then try and thinking of it like the controls on a hi-fi. So on your stereo or whatever, you often have a bass knob and a treble knob. Uh, the bass knob is gonna turn up the low end, the low frequencies, or turn them down and the treble knob is going to boost the high frequencies or turn them down. You might have a mid as well. That's an EQ, basically. But when we're mixing, we normally have a lot more controls at our disposal um, for more surgical EQ cuts and boosts. So why would an EQ be used in mix? Well, there are probably dozens of different reasons, but the five most common, I'd say, are to reduce or remove unappealing frequencies, um, to make space for other instruments in the mix, to enhance certain desired frequencies that you want more of, to differentiate similar instruments between each other, and also you can use it to make special effects, which we'll go into later on. Now I'm gonna go over all of the most common controls that you'd find on an EQ plugin. So you know exactly what they do. You don't wanna be just turning knobs at random, hoping to get the, the desired sound. You wanna make logical decisions um, you want to know exactly what you're doing. So in front of us here, we have this seven band EQ plugin. This is the one that's built into Pro Tools. It doesn't matter what DAW you're using though, this will apply to you. It's, they've pretty much all got the same uh, the same controls, but I've gone for the, the, the built-in one, the stock plugin, and just to keep things simple. And it has most of the things that you'd find on an EQ. So starting from the top of the plugin, you can see we've got the input and output meters. If I play this song, I've put the I've put the, the EQ on the master bus now, so everything's going through this EQ just to, to show you. The top meter is the level that's going in to the EQ, and the bottom meter is is what's coming out. Now these are exactly the same as you uh, as you can see. But if we made some EQ changes, the out would probably change. So if we made some boosts, it would probably, there'd probably be more volume coming back out. Uh, and if we made some cuts, there'd be less volume. I'll just show that in action. So you see now that we've boosted, boosted there by a fair amount, it's increased the output. Then next up, we have output and input controls. This lets you boost uh, the, the level of audio that's going into the EQ plugin uh, by up to 6 dB on this plugin, but other plugins might let you do more. Uh, and then the output is again, so you can boost or, or cut the output level instead. So for example, if I boosted this, this mid range, I could then pull the output back And, and bring it back to the level that it was originally uh, to make up for the boost. And we'll be using that in, in the mixing stage, which I'll show you in the next, next part of the video. Then we have the high pass and low pass filters. A high pass filter or a, a low cut filter, some might call it, basically just cuts off, off the low end and lets the high pass. So you can make this as steep uh, or as shallow as you want. The steepest on this plugin in particular is uh, 24 dB per octave. And then this is basically cutting out the low end. So we can have a listen to what this sounds like on guitars. It's cutting out all the low. And then your low pass filter is gonna be cutting out the high. 
So we've just got the bass and the, the mid coming through there. And then below that, we've got five more filters that allow us to get a little bit more precise with our EQ cuts and boosts. So these two actually let you change between two different types of EQ. If I just bring that in, you can see it's making a kind of shelf EQ, boosting everything below where that frequency is. Um, but we can change that to a bell curve, as you can see. But they've all got the same controls. They've got the Q control, frequency, and gain. So the Q control lets us narrow or widen the band of frequencies that we're affecting. So for example, if you only want to affect, if there's something in the, around the, in the 500 hertz mark and you only want to get cut that out, you can make it for a really narrow EQ and bring that down. But if you just want to do a kind of general um, boost around the low end, we can widen that out and it'll be affecting more of the frequencies. Then the frequency control is where the center frequency is that you're affecting. You can, on this plugin, you can move that around with the mouse or use the knob. And then gain is how much you're affecting it by. So at the moment, we're boosting at about 100 hertz uh, by 5.4 dB. Or if you go into the minus numbers, it will start cutting. So those are the most important controls that you're going to find on pretty much any EQ plugin. This is what you need to know to get started. You might find a couple of extra features on some of them. Um, we can go into more detail on those in uh, a more intermediate video. Now this is what I'd call a paragraphic EQ. Um, it's an EQ that lets you see exactly what you're doing and it lets you affect any frequency. But there are different types of EQs. For example, um, we've got the parametric EQ of the SSL channel plugin, which just has the knobs. It doesn't have the, the graphical part of it. It's based off the original hardware SSL channel. Um, so you can do exactly the same thing with this. Uh, you're a little bit more limited though, and it's especially as a beginner, it's kind of harder to, to visualize and, and understand exactly what you're doing. But feel free to have a play around with both, especially if you've got both at your disposal. Ultimately though, I just recommend sticking with the stock plugin at first, getting your head around that before purchasing any new EQ plugins. So now that you know what the different parameters of an EQ do, we're going to put it into action. You're going to see how to use EQ uh, when you're mixing, where to start. The most important thing though, before you start, um, before you even open up your EQ plugin, is to know exactly why you're doing it. What do you want to achieve with the EQ? There's no point in going in blind. So I've got a vocal here that needs some EQ. I'm just going to play you a little bit first. Who's weak and strong? Okay, so this is recorded quite a long time ago in a not particularly ideal environment. There's a little bit of kind of something in the low, the low mids, um, a kind of boxy roominess that I don't want in there. So when we're talking about removing or reducing unwanted frequencies, uh, that's the kind of thing that we're focusing on. I'm also going to make a couple of changes to get it to sit with the rest of the mix nicely as well, and you'll see that in just a second. So firstly, I'm going to play it soloed and have a listen for those frequencies. Find where that kind of roominess is that we don't want in there and reduce it. So we've got our seven band EQ here. Let's hit play. Who are you to say what's right and wrong? So I know that's around the mid. Who's weak and strong? If we boost it, with quite a narrow cue, it will help us to find exactly where it is. And who am I to hold my breath? Yeah, you can hear that that's really accentuated it, so that's where we need to be cutting. Who are you to say you are Make sure we keep it in the same place, we could just use the gain knob there. Who's weak and strong? Who to say what's right and wrong who's we can yeah that's made it sound a lot nicer as you can see when we play now you'll see the output is lower um, and it makes it difficult to compare between the two because when something sounds louder it normally just sounds a little bit better anyway so I'm gonna adjust the output knob to match those together to make it easier to compare between the two strong and who to hold. Okay, yeah, that's about the same now. And the other cut we're going to do is putting in a high pass filter. Now this is into creating space for other instruments territory. So 
the vast majority of, of tracks where, when I do a mix, um, I'm, I'm using a high pass filter. I'm cutting out some of that low end to make space for the bass, uh, the kick, other bassier instruments. But even on the bass and kick, I normally cut out the very, very low sub bass. And I highly recommend you do the same. Not every mix is the same. It's going to depend mix to mix, but generally you're going to want to cut some of that low end, some of that sub bass, um, especially on vocals to make room for the other instruments and uh, keep things from getting muddy. So let's have a listen. Who are you to say what's right and wrong? Who's weak and strong? Before the storm. Yeah, so it's not making a huge amount of difference, actually, uh, but that's that's fine. It, it's cutting out that very low end energy and helping make space in the mix. It's a cumulative effect as we do this on the rest of the tracks as well. I'm going to bring the rest of the instruments back in now, listen to this from a macro mixing perspective uh, and see how it works with the rest of the tracks. <laughs> Okay, so it's sounding nice. I want to bring the low end down a little bit more. Just for this section, it's quite a kind of airy, ethereal kind of uh, sound that I'm going for. So I'm just going to bring that down a little bit. Um, and then maybe add a little bit of brightness at the top. Let's have a listen though. So we've got things sounding a little bit brighter, a bit less muddy, it fits in the mix very nicely. And all that just with one plugin, EQ is really important alongside compression, two of the most important plugins you're going to be using, so it's a good job to get your head around this. Um, now there are two more uses of EQ that I wanted to show you. One was differentiating between other instruments, other similar sounding instruments, and another one was creating certain effects that we can do with EQ. I'm going to move over to another, another mixing session now and show you those two, both really worth listening to because these are very common uses of EQ. So when we talk about differentiating similar instruments, when you've got, for example, two takes of the same guitar, things can start getting a bit messy, um, especially if they're using the same amp, same settings, everything like that it would be difficult to differentiate between the two. It can make for a less interesting mix, um, a less defined stereo image as well. Let me play you these two guitars. We'll just listen to this one and this one, both recorded with two mics, no EQ on them. Uh, have a listen to both of them together. It kind of sounds a bit messy, you can't really tell the difference between the two guitars. So if we take a look at the EQ applied to the first guitar, it'd be two plugins because I recorded it with two mics. You can see that I put around a 3D boost at around 13 kilohertz uh, on both of them. And then I've dropped by again around 3, 3 dB at around five and a half kilohertz. So let's put those on and just have a listen to that first guitar. So it's brightening up. I've also taken out some of some of the low mid there, um, but it sounds good. It's a good it's a good guitar sound, uh, especially when it's with everything else. But it sounds good. It's meant to be a kind of rhythmic, uh, very crunchy um, guitar that goes with the more full bodied guitar in the middle. But if we take a look at the second guitar, just get those two EQs up. I put a boost of around three dB. Uh, at, at around 5k. So where we were cutting 5k on the first guitar, we're boosting on this one. I'm actually dropping a little bit of uh, a little bit of the very top end there. So it's kind of alternating the EQ. Now, if we listen to the two of them together, firstly without the EQ, then with the EQ. So we've given them both very different sounds, even though it's the same guitar being recorded, uh, just to help them stand out. And then once they're, they're panned uh, and everything's in place, 
it's much easier to tell the difference between them. It makes it more of a, a kind of wide stereo effect. It clears up the mud, it makes a kind of wider separation, uh, just, just what we need for the chorus. And then the final way that I want to show you how you can put EQ to use today is a bit of a fun one. Uh, there are loads of different kind of effects that you can do with EQ, um, sort of messing up the messing up the sound, making it sound uh, interesting, making it stand out. In for this one, for the intro, I've made a kind of telephone effect. So if you cut out a huge amount of the low end and the low mids uh, and the top, then there could be a nice boost around around 1, 2K, you can make this this kind of telephone effect. If I play the the drums after it without without the uh, the EQ first. And then with this telephone effect EQ on. And the reason I've done that is because when it opens out into the into the song and the EQ kind of fades away, it's got this really cool effect where it just pulls you into the song and kind of explodes. Now those are the basics of EQ and how to get started with using it in your mix. There's loads more you can learn about EQ uh, and we're gonna be covering more and more in future videos. I recently put out a video that teaches you everything that you need to know to get started on your mixes in just half an hour. It's just a 30 minute video and it gives you all the background of mixing and the fundamentals, the mixing process, everything that you need to get started. So it's, if you haven't seen it already, um, it's worth watching that and then maybe going back to this video uh, and other more in-depth videos afterwards. But let me know in the comments section below if there's anything uh, that you're not sure about with EQ, if there's anything at all that you're struggling with, um, whether it's vocals, drums, guitar, synths, whatever it is, uh, I'll be here to help. And if you wanna see more mixing tutorials just like this, then hit that subscribe button. And of course, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.